being it would be a career maker. Mm-hmm. If, if you're in your 30s, 40s, or even your early 50s and not that close to retirement, it would be a career maker for any prosecuting attorney to be able to do a jury trial involving this young man. And they will do everything within their power to do that just for selfish reasons, if nothing else. Um, so I'm, I'm not, like I say, I'm not uh, involved in, in researching it or doing anything with it. I got my own caseload to deal with. Uh, Obviously and clearly, the defense would like to see him uh, be shown insane so that his life would not be at risk of being executed. He's going to be locked up the rest of his life regardless. Uh, He may genuinely be insane. What little bit I did read about him, his uh, bio, uh, the various uh, modalities of of, uh, psychiatric treatment he had over the years, he sounds like a very disturbed young man to me. Yes, I got a question from the chat room, John, and it says, do you know, does John Moore know Terrell Corp CEO? Do you know Ter- um, Terrell, Terrell Corp? Do you know the CEO uh, of Terrell Corp? Oh, no. Who is it? I, I don't know. He says, and why not oh. if his answer is no? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I guess I'll find out. Okay. <laughs> Well, I could do a Google search and find out who it is. But... I have no idea. It's T E R R A L Terrell. T E R R A L. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what is what what that has to do with anything. But okay. <laughs> Thanks, piano. I appreciate it, buddy. <laughs> but anyway, getting back to to the weather and and the events. So right now, as we see the the worst tornado season in quite some time they're predicting an active hurricane season um do you see things degrading each year or are we just going to see it kind of like fall off the map as okay far, as far as weather's Here, concerned here here's what i recommend people do now i think joe and i've had this conversation gwen have you seen the, the hollywood film the day after tomorrow no you have not okay you need to watch it. Everybody listening to us talk tonight needs to watch the Hollywood film the day after tomorrow. Yeah. It is a Hollywood feature film. It came out, what, five or six years ago? Something like that? Yeah, it was. It, yeah. It was, it's uh, been a while. It's been a little been while, a, yeah. It's been a while. The, the, there's lots of plots and subplots. The main plot of the film is the following. The Gulf Stream has stopped. That's the main plot of the film. Now, past ice ages have begun two different ways. One, the, the premise they use in the film is a matter of weeks, if not days. We go from what we thought to be and always used to think of as normal to a full-blown ice age in a matter of weeks, if not days. And there is evidence to support that. And the evidence, and they, they, they actually do point out the evidence. This is real scientific evidence. In Siberia, uh, back in the 1890s, they started building a railroad, digging down through the ice to the permafrost. They started finding frozen mastodons, frozen in a standing position, eating subtropical plants. Now, in that case, the, earth, the planet, at least that part of the planet, went from a subtropical climate to being frozen in a matter of minutes, so fast that these Animals, the three times the size of an African elephant, they were frozen, flash frozen so fast that when they thawed out, the meat was still fresh enough to be served as delicacies for human consumption in Paris restaurants. Now, that's fast wow. frozen. Wow is right. <laughs> now, that's one way an ice age can start, and there is evidence of that. The other way is for it to be a rather slow-moving event by comparison, taking maybe three years or five years or ten years going from what we call normal now into an ice age. Here's what I tell people, Gwen. We've got the day after tomorrow, the, the premise of the day after tomorrow, right now in slow motion. <clears throat> that appears to be what's going on. So does the whole Earth cover in ice or just the northern hemisphere or – the, the, uh, I mean, the ice-covered areas expand dramatically from what they are. Uh, this, I just talked to a man in, in Edinburgh, Scotland last night. He says, John, we had the worst. I can't duplicate his accent. We had the worst winter since they've kept records. And just north of him in Ireland, the pipes were freezing because they didn't bury their pipes deep enough. Uh, 
England, Ireland, Scotland, London is just about as close to the North Pole as Moscow is. Now that they've lost the warming effect of the Gulf Stream, they're starting to get very severe winters that they're not prepared to deal with. And in fact, the human-built infrastructure is not prepared to deal with severe winter, just by the, through the fact they don't bury the pipes deep enough, if nothing else. That's right. How interesting is that? I mean, and, and I remember seeing a lot of um, uh, video footage from over there where uh, the raw sewage was really starting to become a problem. Oh, yes. Yeah, I mean, oh, yes. because people can't flush their toilets. Absolutely. So, so it becomes really a, a, a big-time health crisis over there. It is. You can't have millions of people living in densely populated areas without fresh water for drinking, bathing, mm-hmm. and firefighting. So, yes, and that's where they're going. It took decades to build the human structure of fresh water pipes, sewer lines, all the rest of it. They don't even have furnaces in their homes. They don't need furnaces. <laughs> not, not like we're used to here, and where it's really cold. Right. Let me get uh, let me get uh, just a bit of your sworn speculation for a second. Okay. Knowing full well where we're headed with the weather and other world events, what do you think? And I'm starting to do a little research into this deep underground bases. They're all over the country. They're still building them now, as it stands. Well, and I, I need to correct you. You look at the maps of the FEMA camps. Yes. Look at the maps of the deep underground bases. I, you know, all the Look at the FEMA camps, for example. I found two of them. They were anywhere near the east coast, the west coast, or the gulf coast. Mm-hmm. They all set back away from these oceans, except for the two I was able to see. The same thing applies to these deep underground military bases. They're all set back from the oceans, from the gulf coast, the east coast, and the west coast. Uh, a good safe distance at a good altitude. So do you think that the uh, the powers that be here have known that this is coming for quite some time? At least since 79. So I've been it, able to backtrack. I've got a witness who was at a one of the first briefings in 1979, mm-hmm. uh, U.S. Navy uh, flag rank officers in New Orleans. And he watched my DVD in, 19, in, in, uh, uh, in 2009, 30 years later. See, he set up the briefing room. He was just a young sailor. He set up the, the lights, the tables, the chairs, the sound system, and he saw the map on the wall. The map is on my DVD, Global Warming, What the Government Isn't Telling You. He did not know Joe and Gwen for 30 years what that map meant. He's at these admirals. They show up for a weekend briefing. He says, John, admirals don't do weekend briefings. They show up smoking cigars, slapping each other on the back. How's the wife? How's the kid? How's the career? Ha, ha, ha. Joke, joke, joke. When they left the briefing room, they all looked like their puppy dogs had died. They just got the briefing. They knew what was coming at us in the future, and they were very unhappy men as well. They should have been. They were just shown the end of the world as we know it. So what precautions do we take uh, in our day-to-day lives to prepare for that eventuality, or can we do anything? Beginning with these these briefings, these I've debriefed a lot of my information. Gwen comes from my locating and debriefing Navy veterans, usually submarine veterans. They were all told in these briefings that the Arkansas Missouri Ozarks is one of the known safe havens, and thousands of these men, when it came time to retire, relocated their families, even though many of them didn't even want to, to the Arkansas Missouri Ozarks. On the on the disc number two of my global warming DVD set. I interview the one Navy veteran who's gone public. Rusty's men have a pension that would be at risk. Tim Spencer does not have a pension. He has 100% disability from radiation poisoning that took place on these submarines. So he went public, and he talks about the map, how he saw the map, and how he relocated his family from central Florida. Uh, and, and In fact, I think he was in Georgia his last assignment. No, it was for central Florida when, he, when it came time to retire. He moved from Central Florida to Missouri because of the map. So that would be that would be the one thing that you would tell folks to do. If that's not an option, and I know for a lot of people it's not, you need to be at a good altitude. The Navy says 400 feet. I say 800 feet. You need to be away from major metropolitan areas. You need to have enough potable water that you own and you control in some way or another for growing your fruits and vegetables and for all the other domestic needs you might need. A way to grow your own fruits and vegetables. Have some chickens. 
maybe a couple of goats, and be part of a community of, of people who are independent and do have gardens and do have chickens and do have goats and think that hunting and fishing is, man, is God's gift to mankind. You know, that's the kind of neighbors you want that know each other, that trust each other, and will look out for each other. Right. We have a uh, a little co-op system going right now. As a matter of fact, one of um, one of the farmers, right right on the edge of uh, the county I live in, and then the city next to it. What he does is he puts out sections of his land, and then people lease sections of his land. And part of that lease is, you know, you can plant whatever you want and he'll water it and maintain it and all that kind of stuff. And then he creates like a little swap shop or co-op type of thing where people go and exchange their their vegetables. So, you know, you may have uh, – you might have Joe Schmuckatelli over there growing zucchini and then uh, you've got uh, John Doe down at the other end who sells uh, corn and they, you know, they do their their swaps. So it's – a very good thing that's uh, starting to go down. It, it's uh, something that is encouraging to see, especially in these times, that there are people that are reverting Absolutely. back to some of the older, uh, more traditional style. There's, uh, there's literally hundreds. There's literally hundreds of efforts like that all over the country, spontaneously popping up, and there will continue to be even more of them. Uh, learning how to sure. garden is a good skill. Go ahead, Gwen. Gwen. Oh, I I just think that, you know, uh, my grandfather, he was a sharecropper, and I I think that we're, you know, it's possible to negotiate those types of deals with landowners that aren't using all of their land, even if there's a small strip of land that they can't plant their crops on because the tractors can't go there, doesn't mean you can't grow squash there or green beans or something, you know. Absolutely. I agree. Well, John, uh, your website, thelibertyman.com, you've got your radio show five days a week now, 7 to 9 a.m. on uh, Republic Broadcasting Network. Is that right? That's it. That's it. Central, 7 to 9 Central. Fantastic. Uh, Do you have any contact information if anybody wants to contact you in any way? Well, just go to my website, and uh, there's a telephone number there and my my email address, thelibertyman.com. The LibertyMan.com, folks. You right. can catch John Moore. I don't want to keep you from your bike ride, John. I'm <laughs> looking forward to getting on that big, beautiful motorcycle. <laughs> so, thanks for coming on the show tonight, and uh, of course, you're welcome back anytime. Okay, hey, thank you, Joe. Hey, no sweat, John. Anytime, folks. When we come back, uh, hour number two, we're going to be talking about uh, the internet and what happens when the internet goes away. Uh, all that and more. Latest headlines. We'll talk about it. Hour two. Stay tuned, folks. Don't go away. Still there, Joe? 